the Amaran 60X. Almost the perfect light, except for one flaw. Hello, my name is Jonathan Palfrey and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Please like and subscribe as it massively helps me out. Now today we are looking at the Amaran 60X. This is a light that I've been really looking forward to getting. It's been a long way actually. I did a pre-order pretty much as soon as they announced it. It seems like it got shipped to the US first and we had to wait a bit longer here in the UK. But finally, the Amaran 60X has arrived. Now I've already done a review of the Aperture 60X and that's a quite different light. Maybe it's a similar power in terms of the draw it takes and the actual uh, chip output. But obviously that goes through um, a lens on the front, increasing the intensity of the light. And it's more used as a light that you can shape and point in the background or use as a hair light. While this is gonna be more being used, I'd imagine, as a key light or a softer hair light with a, maybe a soft box or an umbrella. The question is though, is it worth it? It's a really cheap, affordable price, but is it a light that you should be investing in? So let's get the first big question out of the way. Is it bright enough? And well, I can confirm for a lot of situations, yes, it is. This video is actually being shot with the 60X going through the massive Light Dome 2. And it shows that it can handle it. Now, the actual attachment, uh, whether that is gonna be strong enough to be able to hold the weight of the uh, Light Dome 2 over a long period of time, I'm not so sure. This may not be the best setup um, and there's probably a better solution in terms of mounting the light dome separately uh, to the light stand and then having the uh, 60X attached on the back. That's a pretty more sensible solution to go with this long term if you were gonna go down this route. However, it does show in the right circumstances, the 60X does have enough power to act as a very good large key soft light. Now, if you're just looking for a really good key light in a controlled studio environment, you probably wouldn't be going for this anyway. You'd probably be looking at a very similarly priced Amaran 100X, which I've already done a review of, and that's an excellent light. But there was one flaw with that one, and that was there was no good battery solution. And that's where this light really comes in. Yes, you haven't got quite the same power and output, but you've got a much more compact light that can be powered off battery. For me, if you're doing a lot of corporate work, a battery powered light in your kit is vital. And, and the reason for that really is you don't know what environment you're gonna go into. One day you may be filming in a very controlled environment where you can close everything off and you can uh, plug your light straight into the wall and that's great and that's where 100X would work absolutely fine. However, there are many situations on these shoots where you're not actually allowed to plug the light into the uh, building power supply. You might be shooting in a very public environment and you actually feel that it wouldn't be safe to run a cable along the ground uh, trying to find a plug, say, in a cafe or something like that. That's where battery lights are really good and actually the power isn't so important in those situations. You probably still want to have a bit of that ambient light that's in the room because you want to see the person in the environment. So it's not like you're needing to fully control all the lighting of the entire room. Not that you would be able to anyway. Having a bicolor light, which you can tweak the color and adjust the brightness to really kind of match it up with the interior space. So you just get a nice soft key landing on your main talent is all you really want. And that's where I think this could be absolutely perfect. Also very common on these sort of corporate shoots is you'll be running around a lot. So size and weight matters. This light is so small. I couldn't believe when I got it out of the case how small it actually was. I was expecting something obviously smaller than the 100X, which is already a very compact light. But they've really managed to compact everything down. And I've seen the uh, Nan Light 60 as well, and that's a great light, but it, it is just a miniature version of their bigger lights, and it's like a miniature version of the uh, 100X. But this is a truly, really small light. When you take away the attachments, when you take away the um, front adapter, you have a light that can actually fit into the lens slot of your camera bag. Really keeping it down, meaning you can always have it on you even on shoots where you perhaps can't bring much equipment. I could see a situation where you can't maybe even use a light stand. So you could get someone to actually hold this light up handheld, stick a battery on the side with the V-lock mount there, 
and then use just an umbrella going through to give you a nice soft source. This would be a super quick way of getting a nice looking interview, even in an extreme run and gun situation. So what is it like to actually use the light? Well, on the back here, you can see you've got one dial which controls both the brightness control and the color temperature. And just, it's a simple case of dialing up and down and then pressing and holding down to switch between the two. I wish there were two dials on the back. It's a bit frustrating that you have to kind of use one, especially because although it's a clever feature, when you tap, it jumps between different color temperatures or different brightnesses, like preset brightnesses, depending on which mode you're in. Because they've now put all that functionality into one dial, it's easy to press down and think that you're pressing to switch between color temperature and uh, brightness, which is a very common feature on a lot of lights, but instead you actually are jumping between the settings. So you may mess up your settings that you've just gone and figured out, you know, the exact ex uh, exposure that you want for your scene. You click that thinking you're gonna to go to change the white balance. And in fact, actually you've now just jumped it up to 100% uh, brightness or something. So that's a little flaw that's a little bit frustrating. Of course, you could use the Bluetooth app, which all Aperture and Amaran lights now come with. Uh, it's a very clever app, it works really nicely. Uh, it gives you lots of extra functionality, like all of things like the uh, effects controls and things like that. Personally though, I just don't like using them. I find them too fiddly. Even the best apps take too long to load up. You've got to get through your phone to get there. And I'd rather just leave my phone in my pocket, to be honest. I like physical controls. I like the screen on the side. It's clear and easy to read. For me, that's what matters in a professional device. Now you'll notice that there is a little reflector on the front, and this isn't a full-size reflector. This is a miniature version. In fact, I've got another one here. So you can see the comparison between a kind of normal-sized reflector that you'll get, say, with the 120 or the uh, 100X or whatever like that. And you can see here, it's, it's a miniature version, which just makes it a bit more compact to carry with. Now, unfortunately, this does create a very, very heavy hotspot in the center. It's been a flaw of all their new hyper reflectors that we've been seeing from Aperture, where they've got this new sort of interior design. It's obviously there to try and push up the power numbers that they get on their readings. Unfortunately though, that doesn't mean much. What's the point in having a really hot spot and then sort of a soft light around it or a weaker light around it? For me, I'd rather have a nice even spread of light that maybe is not as powerful, but at least it's kind of consistent across the board in the light circle. Now, of course, you can power this off the mains like any light out there, but then if you're gonna do that, why don't you just get 100X? But for me, why we got two of these lights is for the battery operation. Now, they give you a few options, which is always nice, and I do like that they've done that. First off, you get this um, Sony NPF battery converter. We've seen these sort of things before. Basically allows you to put two batteries on the here, attach it via the V-lock on the side of the light, which is nice and easy and simple and then you can plug it straight in on the back. This gives you a very nice compact setup, you know, no sort of dangling cables or units down further on the light stand. Something that I find really frustrating with lights like the 120D. It's all good using Sony batteries, but it does require this extra bit to have to carry around and use. What about if you just wanna go direct? You just wanna attach a V-lock battery straight to the side of this light and then run it with a D-tap straight into the back. That seems like the most simple and easy solution for this light and, and most compact setup that you'd want to use. Well, here are the FX Line Nano 2 batteries. I've done a review of them. These are absolutely brilliant V-Lock batteries. Highly recommend them because of the excellent USB-C capability that's in them. It allows you to uh, charge via USB-C and also allows you to power things off USB-C too, such as your MacBook Pro, for example. So I love these, these batteries and I've bought a load more uh, Nano Ones, especially for this light, so we can use them everywhere. Unfortunately, attaches on the side there. It's really nice and solid. That is absolutely amazing. Couldn't ask for more, except for the fact, look where the D-tap is. Unfortunately, where the D-tap is on this battery is in the wrong position for this light it gets right in the way of where the um, Bowens mount uh, sticks out on the light. Because the Bowens mount is a bigger adapter compared to the light size, to keep the light compact, they had to sort of extend the front out. Unfortunately, that means it gets in the way of attaching a D-tap plug into the side of the FX Lion batteries. So that's a big warning right there. Unfortunately, this is a flaw. You could say the battery or you could say the light, 
whoever's to blame here, it does mean that certain VLOC batteries, if they have their uh, DTAP on the right hand side, it means you just basically can't use it with this light. Unless you can figure out a way of extending the VLOC attachment away from the light itself. Otherwise, it's just not going to work. And that's a real shame because really, really excited about using it in this exact setup. Now, even if you do find a VLOC battery, we already own a VLOC battery that works perfectly fine with this light, there is one more flaw as well. And that is the fact that they haven't included the DTAP cable that you actually need to be able to start using it directly with a VLOC battery. Now, I understand it's a cheap light. They don't want to be chucking in items that perhaps you won't use. But when they've actually got the VLOC on the side, it feels like, you know, they're asking you to be able to use that. You know, they've given you the adapter for using with Sony batteries. That's great. I personally could have done without that and it could have just been a, a, an accessory that you could have bought later. But the actual, you have to go out and buy and find a cable that goes and works with this. Now I did get this one off Amazon, it's an extra 10 quid. I just wish they included one of these inside the box. So is the 60X a worthwhile investment? Should you go ahead and purchase one? And is it almost the perfect light? Well, I think it is. I think other than a few little niggles, like with the reflector, the only single dial on the back, and the uh, issue with the V-locks, certain V-locks not working because of the placement. It's, it's pretty much perfect. I think it's such a great light. It's exactly kind of what you expect for the price, to be honest. You know, the build quality is more than good enough. Yes, okay, the attachment that you use here, which you can use with your, obviously your um, umbrella, it, it's not perhaps the strongest, but it, it's good enough for most use cases, especially for the size light you're using with this, and it's nice and small and compact. For me, this is definitely a worthwhile pickup. I would definitely get one of these and add it to your kit. Now, whether you get one of these instead of a 100X, it really depends on the types of shooting you're doing. The 100X is a more powerful light. Um, it's gonna cover you for more situations, but unfortunately, because it doesn't have a simple battery solution, it's always gonna be limited where you can and can't use that light. If you're using it in, say, a YouTube environment or a studio environment where it doesn't move very far, then obviously you can run it off mains, go with the 100X, because I think it's just a much better light overall. You've got stronger yoke on the side, you've got better controls. But I think if you're going for something that you need that is still good enough to use as a key occasionally, and you need battery operation where you can use it on the go in any location, then this is a very, very hard light to beat. I'd love to know your thoughts on this light. Are you excited about picking one up or do you think there is an alternative out there which is better? Please let me know in the comment section down below. Thank you very much for watching. Please like and subscribe and I will see you next time. Goodbye.